Hi, my name is Stone Monk Gamer, one of the co-hosts of uh, the Mortal Realms podcast. I've been playing Age of Sigmar since it came out and really enjoying it. Uh, just a month ago, uh, Games Workshop came out with their skirmish rule set, and I wanted to finally getting a chance to sit down and play the skirmish rule set with some friends. But we'd also been itching to do something more narrative, more um, role play oriented. One of our inspirations, uh, my inspirations, was the Hinterlands pack uh, expansion that uh, that Sam James put out, also known as Bottle. Um, and the Hinterlands very much emulated um, Mordheim, uh, where you've got a small war band, and after each battle, they can uh, you know take injuries and, and major injuries and wounds and stuff, and you may want to sell them off and gain uh, bring on new ones in your you're collecting gold along the way, etc. Uh, it was a lot of fun to play. Um, got to play a lot of games of it and really enjoyed it. Um, and one of the rule sets, uh, kind of expansions that it was part of that packet was called a Realm Masters campaign. And what he did that was interesting is he pit a uh, the Realm Master, which ap operates like a game master or dungeon master, uh, not against the the players, but kind of facilitating what the players are doing. And it had multiple players playing their individual war bands, a hero, some henchmen, uh, against whatever the, um, the Realm Master, the RM, would throw at them. And so I hadn't had a chance to play that yet. And so when kind of formulating this idea, I wanted to combine um, the two ideas together, the skirmish rule set from Games Workshop and this idea of a Realm Master from uh, the Hinterlands. Now, as I got into it, started trying to push them together and mold them and flex them, it didn't quite work as I'd, exp as I'd hoped. Um, there's a difference in currency. Um, the skirmish system in uh, Age of Sigmar doesn't do anything with injury or death of your, of your models. Now, I'm really looking forward to seeing what um, Tom and Vince come out with for our, uh, of Warhammer Weekly come out with for kind of adding on to that skirmish setting more crunchy and, and interesting ways um, of developing and, and your warband, etc. And uh, so looking forward to seeing what that is and hopefully playtesting some of that. Um, but as I started moving these, these pieces around, um, uh, you know, th there's definitely some things that I wanted to uh, make a part of this campaign. Um, so first and foremost, I had a number of players. I have four players uh, that are going to be with me: uh, Davy, Paul, Aaron, and Ke <laughs> Kenny. <laughs> um, and so the four of them are going to be playing their own war bands, and they're going to be trying to, you know, grow and and become better as these war bands do. And they're going to be kind of uh, cooperating together for the story, but also competing with each other in some ways because. There's going to be some advantages if, if somebody's got the highest, um, you know, uh, rating. Um, so, uh, and, and when they're, you know, when we're going to gather for game nights, I'm going to come with uh, a battle plan or two, uh, some rules, some new things that they haven't seen before, and they're going to have to either, you know, fight some bad guys, solve a puzzle, uh, compete with each other for uh, an outcome, uh, and... Uh, at the end of, of each of those uh, games, they're going to uh, earn renown, they're going to find artifacts, uh, and they're going to really hopefully have a lot of fun developing the story of their warband. So that's the format they're going to be going through, you know, and what I really want to do is keep this simple. Campaigns are notorious for breaking down, for uh, kind of getting lost or disinterest because that you know there's some complexity I want to keep the bookkeeping down the administrative side of it down and I want players to be able to kind of just show up and go with the flow and I want them to walk away from each session with uh, a story to tell uh, and and a way of sharing that with each other so um, the first thing I had to do though was figure out how to push these two things together and what I really honed in on and was inspired uh, by was this idea of renown. Um, and perhaps, you know, I'm, I'm going to assume that Games Workshop had this in mind when they named their point system renown. 
it's possible that it's just a fun way of talking about the points or the gold or whatever you're using to spend, whatever the currency is. Renown is a, could be just a good name that they came up with. Um, but uh, Renown is really, for me, what I wanted to kind of tie into or tap into and make central to this campaign is uh, the idea that your Renown is your reputation. Now, if you're playing a campaign where you're just going back and forth, trying to win a battle, whoever wins the most battles, you know, wins the campaign, um, then I think, you know, that's fine. Um, since we're playing a, more of a role play RPG oriented uh, version of this, what I really wanted to do is uh, I want their reputation, you know, which that is something that can really facilitate reputation as they come up against NPCs, as they enter in new areas um, of the game, uh, go further into the story, their reputation, their renown will have an effect on uh, where they can go and where they can't go maybe, or how a uh, NPC uh, feels about them, um, etc. Um, but I, so I came up with kind of a, what I think is going to be a unique way of, of working with this central tenet of renown. Now, for the moment, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna talk about um, you know injuries and uh, kind of loss of skills or abilities or models. I don't know if that's going to fit into the system yet. Um, but I want to talk through kind of what what the system is going to entail and where the risk and reward is, where the the ruin is to the renown, and that's what I'm kind of calling this expansion is renown and ruin, um, and where that tension is maybe without having to keep track of injuries or abilities, etc. So, um, I'll get started with that a little bit. What I did um, originally is I kind of I, I took out the skirmish, um, uh, kind of made a template in Google Docs. It was based off of the skirmish template found in the skirmish rule set. And it was fine being able to put the name of your hero, how many uh, renowned points they, they cost, etc., and your warband, etc., um, and, and such, uh, the alliance, etc. But it, it didn't really tell any stories. Um, it didn't give me anything. Uh, what I had, had to do is ask some questions in addition to that to start getting the, the my players talking about their warbands, why they put them together, who their heroes were, what was driving them to come to the game uh, or come to Shadespire, uh, the setting that we're going to be in. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about setting in, in a future video. But for now, I really wanted to just get this idea of, of renown and ruin out there for some feedback, for some debate, for some conversation. Uh, and so uh, I needed a new kind of way of, I also had a, needed a way to make it easy for my players to get what I was talking about. How a warband can, can gain renown and not make it feel like they're spending points, that it's a currency, that it's gold. Because that's not really what I want. I really want them to feel like that they're gaining a reputation, and that when when you they complete a battle or when they find an artifact of of its own renown of import, uh, that um, they that that the stories of that would be told in the immediate area and their reputation would grow. So when I you know I uh, I uh, beat a campaign or I beat a, a battle plan, I get a major victory. I get the maximum number of renown for that, and maybe that varies depending on uh, what the the battle plan was, etc. But you know, I I get to the next place where there's people, and my my heroes uh, warband, the henchmen and, and women start, you know, going to the pub. They drink, they tell the stories of what they've just been through to people, whoever will listen, um, and um, uh, and and word will get around. And because of that, maybe people are drawn to them, maybe new followers who are looking for somebody to kind of help them get rich, help them find things within the city. Uh, maybe they'll come and want to be a part of, of that war band. Uh, and so instead of saying, hey, I got six renown, I'm going to go spend it on a six renown character or, or you know, model. Um, instead, we're going to tell stories about, well, why did uh, you know, I, I accomplish this thing? And now people are drawn to me um, and, and make that a part of the story. Um, and so um, not only that, 
Um, so uh, not only uh, so those things will build renown and it will help you again attract new followers, uh, have maybe a better rapport with an NPC or somebody who rules a section, a, a, a local Dutch or or controller of an area uh, might have a better response to you depending on your reputation, um, or vice versa. Somebody who's not in your alliance that runs an area may feel worse about you because of your reputation. If you have a lower reputation, maybe they're like, "Ah, eh, you don't bother me. I'm not scared." Uh, and so they don't, they don't get in your face. Uh, but you know, maybe if the the renown's too high, they feel threatened, etc. So things like that. Um, now here's where the ruin comes in, is that I feel if your reputation can increase, it should also be able to decrease. So the way that I f see that happening is by making losses in a you know, uh, not making major wins and, or major victories, but by earning uh, major losses in a, a battle plan, ruining something or, or fumbling the ball so badly that your renown goes down. Now, what are the repercussions uh, of renown going down? Well, if you just had somebody join you, a new follower join you because uh, they heard great things about you, and then the next um, uh, kind of conflict you come across, your hero and your warband performs poorly, he's going to become disillusioned. Uh, or she's gonna d decide that maybe this isn't the warband for them, and so if they were the you know kind of last uh, last uh, minion hired, maybe they walk away, maybe they're no longer a part of your group, and you got to find somebody else to join your crew. Um, uh, now, so so things like that, and so you can kind of get that, or maybe you, you your art you the last thing you did was gain an artifact, um, and so but you just fumbled this uh, play here, well maybe in that fumbling, in that fight that you just were in over your head, that artifact went missing um, or something to that nature. So um, it's, and, and again, it's a, it's a justification. Uh, because this happened to affect my renown, uh, these uh, uh, events took place as a result. Um, so one of the interesting mechanics that I'm going to ask them to, the party to kind of play with is the idea of quests where they could uh, choose to go and find something or do something on behalf of an NPC. And to do so, the whole party as a whole or each uh, a specific individual uh, warband could stake their reputation on being able to complete this quest. So let's say that uh, there's a hag who needs you, them to recover uh, the eye, an eyeball for her. Um, you know, thinking of, uh, you know, Greek tragedies and stuff. Um, and uh, so if they did that, they could, they could put whatever reputation they want on it. Um, or she could demand a certain amount of reputation. Let's say it's, it's 10 um, renown. And so they, you know, say, yes, we're going to go and do this. And if they go and they complete the task, come back and give her the I, um, they'll have basically taken their 10 renown and added 10 renown to their their uh, to their party they've they've gained you know she's uh, maybe it's based on how respected that hag is or how connected she is uh, that you know uh, that would now increase their renown let's say that they either fail at bringing that eye back um, or uh, they choose not to go back after a certain period of time uh, then they would lose that renown they wagered. They would lose that tent renown. And because that hag said, well, I, I entrusted this to so-and-so, and they didn't follow through. Um, so reputation went down. Um, so it's another uh, kind of mechanic to just say, hey, I want you, how can I get their reputation to go up? How can I get their reputation to go down? Another piece of that then is how do I help them, give them enough things to justify their um, your reputation on? I'm not looking for the players to gain um, new models every single uh, time we get together. Um, however, uh, maybe if it's every two event, you know, we get together twice and then they, they find a place to rest. Uh, again, a place for their warband to tell stories and, and to spread the, the legends of their, their hero. Um, at, at, maybe at those points then there's room to, to get hero, you know, add people to warband. But again, they may have gotten enough renown to, to really double their warband, and, and I really don't want it to be that fast of a growth. So I need to come up with some other things 
for them to justify their renown with, whether that be a connection or uh, you know a, a making um, you know a friend in the space or something you know wherever they're at, um, or you know be able to because of their reputation gain access to some place, um, and so you know they're kind of uh, doing some things that way. So um, it, the thing I'll show you is is what I did for my players. Then uh, I came up with this uh, this sheet. Now this is just a um, spreadsheet. Hopefully I'll be able to make it look better in, in the future. Um, but I'm, since we're still testing it and we're using Google Docs to share things, this was the best format I felt for what we were doing. Now if you look here, every warband uh, starts off with, uh, you know, kind of taking on this quest. So because they've taken on this quest in their immediate area, uh, you know, their culture, their small, you know, army that they belong to or the, the warlord that they owe allegiance to, they have a certain amount of, of renown just for, for taking this on. And so in this, in this tester that I used, or this example I used for my uh, players, um, uh, the, uh, in this case a Grot Shaman, Shaman on Wolf um, was out in the desert uh, with his brothers uh, practicing his magic, etc. Uh, and uh, felt a caravan going by and saw an opportunity uh, to go in and, and uh, you know, kind of either take something or, or sneak his way into Shadespire uh, with this caravan, etc. And so he gets his, his brothers, uh, he, you know, because he's got of this uh, undertaking, uh, he uh, has his own value of, of his own reputation of 16, and then he's able to uh, allure two brothers, uh, uh, wolf riders, to join him on this quest. And so as they're going, following close behind the caravan, uh, they come across a bone storm. Uh, and uh, the bone storms in this space, uh, I'll, my, my players went through this in their first campaign, so next episode or, or so I'll share the details of this. But they made it through the bone storm. I'm able to put in a description of how they got through the bone storm, what happened. They, in this case, they... They did some slinking from ruin to ruin and used uh, the people they were following as kind of shields from the storm. Uh, and they passed through unscathed because they're grots, they're sneaky, all that kind of stuff. But during that time, they also managed to find an, an artifact that they pulled from the, one of the, the skeletons that they found in the bone storm. So um, from that interaction, from that one uh, here, uh, I've got six and, six and eight, but let's say it was probably some more like three and three. Uh, and so they gained six more renown. Um, and uh, then we get to a place of respite. Um, and it's a tavern just inside the, the gates of Shades Bar. And uh, they, my grots kind of go and find, we find a place where we can go, find some drink. Uh, they start to chitter chatter and talk and brag and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, and now I've got, uh, my renown is bigger and so I, I'm able to find another, let's say, another, um, uh, just a, a grot with spear uh, to join me. And his name is uh, um, Chad. Um, uh, approaches um, Ikuti from the shadows, impressed with the stories he's hearing, and asks... Uh, if he can lend his uh, spear in ex exchange for gaining renown of his own. So he wants to be a part of the group. Uh, sorry. What I do here is just have this. Uh, then the cost goes down here. Now I've done my accounting. Uh, I still got you know three more renown. I could maybe there's a second grot that would be a part of that. Um, and so now I've I've added uh, I've gained more followers because of my renown. Uh, I've I've done my bookkeeping, but I've also started telling stories. Um, and what I really like about this is that it's focused on the storytelling, the uh, justification for the renown rather than just treating renown like a currency. 
like you might as well as replace renown with gold or with crowns or some other word that means money. Um, so uh, we're going to start off with this. Uh, would love uh, any feedback, thoughts, ideas, uh, concerns you have, uh, you know, uh, critique, whatever. Um, so, you know, share that in the comments down below. Respond to this. Tell me what you think. Um, in the coming videos, I will talk about the setting. I'll talk about um, the individual war bands. Uh, I'll talk about whether or not we're going to be adding in injuries uh, or, you know, either taking away um, skills and uh, attributes, etc., or giving them the ability to gain attributes. I'm thinking that the artifacts are going to be fairly rare, but maybe those are the ways they get gains to their attributes, plus ones and, and minus ones, etc. Um, so, um, but tell me what you think. Tell me what you think about this initial system, renown at the center of it, the risk reward of it, making it feel like your reputation is the most important part as you're going through Shadespire. Uh, seeking riches and uh, um, your own motivations. Um, please uh, like and subscribe to this channel. Uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel. You can tell I've not done this very much. Uh, and uh, catch me on Twitter at Stone Monk Gamer. And uh, we'll talk to you more. I'll share more in the coming weeks. Thanks for joining me.